Welcome back to another episode of Worship Tech Tour. In this episode, we are going to feature Wellspring Church based in Englewood, Colorado. What you are seeing right now is the worship center at Wellspring Church. This is the worship center of my dreams. It combines everything I love about technology as well as liturgy and just the historic elements of our faith all in one room. And here to tell us all about it, his second time featured on Worship Tech Tour is my good friend Jeff Gale, who is the production director, communications director, in charge of all things tech here at Wellspring. So Jeff, tell us what we are seeing here in this room and the story behind it, how you guys got here. Well, I guess, you know, out of the horse's mouth, the first thing that you're seeing is the culmination of all of Jake's dreams come true. Uh, and that was my goal as I set off to build this sanctuary, is really just make Jake happy. So happy to be back on a tech tour. Uh, glad that Jake would give me the time of day to show you guys what's going on here. Uh, we purchased this building a couple of years back. We were in a much smaller sanctuary uh, and the facility we had outgrown it. And uh, so we moved in here a couple of years ago. And as we walked through this building for the very first time, I... Uh, was hanging out with our senior pastor and I kind of put my arm around him and said, bro, I, I don't know how we're going to solve these problems in this room with technology. Um, what we're standing in <clears throat> right now is a updated version of a concrete bunker. Um, every single wall is precast concrete and the room was designed with the intent of having a choir on one side of the room sing and be perfectly heard with no amplification on the other side of the room. So uh, the delay in terms of the audio echo in the room was somewhere between four and five and a half seconds of delay. You would clap and the room would clap back in a very disturbing way. Um, and we knew we wanted to bring a modern worship approach to this space, but I just had no idea how to get there. So um, we gathered the team over about a year and we worked with audiologists. We worked with Summit Integrated Systems as our uh, integrator for all the technology. Uh, we had architects and um, contractors and everybody put their heads together to come up with a solution for this space. And uh, we had our first service in here a couple of months ago. And we are very pleased with how it has come together. And even problems I didn't know how to solve out the gate have been very well solved, which is really exciting. So one of the biggest aspects of this project was the acoustic treatment, right? So tell mm -hmm. us, walk us through what you guys had to do to turn this into a extremely echoey uh, concrete, you know, triangle. That's what this whole thing kind of felt like before to now where you have that only half a second um, worth of reverb in this room. And it sounds super clean. Like you guys, I know you're not here. You can't hear it. Maybe you can tell through our microphones as we're talking, but it's super clean in this room even though it's got you know, the traditional feel with all the stained glass, you can notice all around the, uh, the large acoustic treatment panels, like right there along the wall, as well as on the ceiling, what we've got going up on up there that Jeff's gonna tell us about. But when you're listening to it, I feel like I'm almost in a 800, you know, well, what'd you say, 700 seat capacity? Uh, about or 600. 600, 600 right seat now. capacity room that is like perfectly treated like a, a studio almost is. Um, with very little reflections that are bouncing around a ton of energy. So it's, it's just crazy how quiet it is. Like when I was here on Sunday, Jeff, getting some B-roll footage in between songs when there was like no music, yeah. I like had to stop walking because I like I could hear myself, my footsteps <laughs> on the ground. You don't hear, you know, the HVAC and stuff. So tell us like all the elements that went in to yeah. the, the acoustic treatment of this room to get you here. So uh, the first thing that we had to focus on in this room, obviously, is acoustic treatment. Um, we knew that no matter how expensive of speakers and subs and audio processing that we put in here, we would never get the results that we want uh, out of expensive gear unless we treat the room really well. So we took a three-pronged approach to acoustic treatment. And the first is this gigantic thing on the ceiling that we have affectionately started to refer to as the cloud. Um, the cloud does a couple of things for us. It makes the room really beautiful, which is nice. Uh, it hides all of our HVAC infrastructure because this room did not have uh, air conditioning really when we moved in. Uh, it had kind of an air conditioning unit on one side of the room, but 
Um, we needed to add air conditioning. But then the thing that it does for us that's the most important is it is a gigantic base trap from one side of the room to the other. So above that cloud, what you can't see is four feet or so of blown in uh, insulation and acoustic treatment uh, that when this was all up there, they brought in these big tubes and they shot all that insulation up around the cloud. Um, so it's, it's truly four feet of acoustic treatment. And what that does for us is it absorbs the low end sounds and really makes the bass super punchy um, all the way from the front of the room to the back of the room. But it gets rid of that kind of low, mushy, wah, wah, wah kind of sound that you oftentimes get in these big concrete rooms. So that was approach number one. Approach number two is uh, our stage is actually our air return. And so our stage hooks directly into our HVAC system that's sitting out there on the other side of that wall. But what's cool about it is the air travels into the stage from the sides and it goes through a maze of uh, kind of runways where the air takes a lot longer of a distance to get to the air conditioning and heating system that's outside. So what that means is we get almost zero um, rumble or noise from the HVAC system, which we're very, very pleased with. The third and final piece of treatment is all the acoustic panels around the room. Um, I think that the acoustic panels are actually kind of a work of art uh, because the walls are all kind of like slanted and turned. So they're not, every single acoustic panel had to be completely custom built to slant and turn up the wall. Um, and what you'll notice is in most of the room, we have acoustic panels on this side of the rib, and we don't have acoustic treatment on this side of the rib. And that was done very intentionally because we are a exuberant singing liturgical church body. So what that does for us is all the acoustic panels being slightly facing this way means that the sound coming from the stage hits the acoustic panels and hopefully gets slightly baffled. But the sound of the people all facing this way hits the hard surfaces. And so what that creates in this room is everybody being able to engage in worship and hear each other with the band and the music that's coming at them. So that was a really intentional design piece that we made because we didn't want to actually lose everything. We just wanted to lose the stuff that's annoying that you don't want to hear. Uh, and so we have options to add more acoustic treatment in here, but uh, honestly, at this point, we feel like we're pretty close to where we want to be. Yeah, again, when I was here on Sunday morning, I thought it was a perfect balance of having just enough of that live kind of reverb, natural reverb in the room, but like it, it, it's also very clean and very clear. There's no extra energy bouncing around the room and you can hear the congregation singing. Um, and I love that idea of, you know, having some of those walls be reflective, some being absorbing uh, of the band. It is... Acoustic perfection, at least the closest to it that I've experienced in this a room of this size. Yeah. yeah. Well, let's head back to the booth and I'll show you around uh, with some of the gear, specifically back here. A couple of great things about the booth that uh, anybody who's looking to build a church should appreciate. Check this out right here. This is slanted. You know why? It's so nobody sets their drinks on the side of my booth. <laughs> Very intentional. The other thing that's actually cool is the front of the booth, uh, this is uh, a, kind of a mesh cloth here. And what that allows is for the bass and low frequencies to travel through the booth and actually hit the sound person. So you know how oftentimes you walk into a booth and your sound image instantaneously changes from where you, what you would experience right in front of the booth. So we made this a transparent uh, front of the booth so that the sound guy, the person standing in the booth, has the absolute best image that they can uh, and they don't have to leave the booth. The other thing we did that uh, is somewhat not normal is the booth has a concrete floor. Uh, it's, so it's not stood up on wood or anything like that. And that's also to eliminate any kind of base frequencies that would get trapped in a booth where you stand there. And sometimes you, in our previous uh, sanctuary, you would stand in the booth and you would feel like 10 times more bass. And then you would step out of the booth and you'd be like, oh, the bass is actually way too low in the mix. And that's oftentimes because of the subfloor. And so solid concrete pour for the, for the floor of the booth really helped a lot. That's a problem we have in self-fellowship. <clears throat> yep. So uh, we get into the booth. Um, I can just kind of walk you through the gear in here. 
Uh, we've got the Allen & Heath Avantis audio console. We're super happy with this console. Um, we love running sound. Don't mind that. Uh, we love running sound on it. It's, it's really fun to mix. I think it's really a great middle ground between kind of the Behringer slash midas -y world and then the like high-end Digico, Yamaha, like that kind of world. I think Allen & Heath with the Avantis has really hit a great middle category here of a very flexible console that works how you think it should work, that's very approachable from people that might not have, you know, a degree in audio engineering, um, but also can really get around in terms of customization and what you're able to do on the fly and all that stuff. So um, you can see we've got a couple of speakers back here. We are very far away from the stage. And that was one decision we made that we weren't super happy with, but we had to make it because we didn't want to lose seats behind a sound booth. So uh, we got a couple of reference monitors here that are tuned to be exactly the same as the line arrays that are up there. Uh, and so the sound guy here can either um, solo things in headphones or solo things to these monitors for reference. So that's great. Um, and for audio networking uh, with the Avantis, are you guys running all Dante? Yeah, so everything comes into the system through Allen & Heath uh, Digital Snake technology, their S-Link technology. Uh, but then everything hits the Dante network and audio can, as you well know with Dante, go anywhere and do anything that you need it to do. So, um, yeah, it's, it's S-Link and Dante in uh, one. Are the PA speakers Dante enabled or is it just a regular? Uh, the PA amps. The amps are? I believe they're Dante enabled, yes. Yeah. Um, and so I'm not, I don't think we actually throw audio to the speakers via Dante though. Well, I think they go out the S-Link. Those, those speakers don't have amps built into them. No, no, no. Yeah, the amps are down in the control room. Yep. yep. So um, this computer right here sits here for the sole purpose of being a computer to do a lot of different things on. So we run Spotify, we remote into our pro presenter machine that's downstairs so we can control what's on the LED wall from here if we need to. Uh, it's our, we, we can change Dante routing from here uh, and we multi-track on this computer so that we can do digital sound check and get multi-track files. Um, coming up over this way, uh, we've got Vista by Chroma Q. Um, that's our light rig, and if you know Vista, you know that it can do a lot of things. Uh, we're not a very spinny, lasery light kind of church. Uh, yeah, we're not a very hazy kind of church. It's just not our jam, um, but our light rig can do all of that when called upon. Um, so you'll see when we look up that way, you know, we don't have a ton of intelligent lights. I think we got six or eight or ten intelligent lights mixed with some ellipsoidals for... Um, stage wash, but the, so the lighting rig is pretty, um, pretty basic and also incredibly expandable. So we can add as we grow and change and um, toss in new fixtures and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So like taking a look at the the lighting rig here, I got a nice angle for you guys to kind of take in all the fixtures. Um, so we've got here the trusses up on the side walls. He's talking about those ellipsoidals right there with some movers and. The truss is closer to us, Jeff, um, on the left side. Are those ellipsoidals or are those just some other type of fixture? I can't really tell from here. I think they're ellipsoidals. Yeah. Um, and, then, and then, of course, on the back, you know, or upstage trusses, um, you've got more moving, moving fixtures. You're trying to, trying to find my hand in the, in the <laughs> frame here. Okay, it provides some nice back wash and color or hair lights. Um, so, yeah, really pretty straightforward lighting system. Um, and then of course these house lights, those are all you know LED color changeable. They are, so I'll show you while you're filming here quickly. We can hit our house lights here and make the room any color we want, which is really great. Uh, and then also the back wall back there um, is completely color changing. So when the lights are off, it's black. Lights are on. It can be whatever we want it to be. So we use these uh, different colors and options every Sunday. We just don't use them in kind of flashy, showy ways. We use them in more subtle fade in, fade out kind of ways. We can also change uh, the color that's on the cross right there. Um, so we got lots of different color changing and wash options uh, to really accent things like the church calendar and our sermon series and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, let's talk, let's, while I have my camera here, let's talk about stage design. Um, so just kind of walk us through why you guys configured the stage the way you did. Yeah, um, so 
really we're a, you know, we're a pretty standard church in terms of the band and musicians and that kind of stuff. So every Sunday, most likely you'll see like drums, bass, keys, guitars, and a couple of vocalists. Um, so that's kind of what we designed the stage around. But uh, with us being Anglican, you'll notice a couple of key features. The table that's in the middle of the stage is always in the middle of the stage, and that's where we celebrate communion every weekend. Um, on the left-hand side of the stage, you'll see a wooden lectern, and that's where the word is read every weekend. And then on the right side of the stage, you'll see a uh, baptismal, and that is kind of jutting out um, as well. And so what those things signify for us is that the word on the left side and the sacrament of baptism on the right side are in front of even the preaching um, and where that happens. They jut out into the people. Uh, we used to have a baptismal that was kind of up and tucked away where you'd kind of go back and walk around some stairs to get up high. And while that was fine, um, our belief is that baptism is induction into the family of God. And so how, how would you want to get inducted in the family of God from like a little perch like way up high and far away? We wanted the baptismal to like jut out into the room. Um, so you'll see uh, some audio things up there. Uh, the stairs that are coming down the, sta the stage are see-through. There's three subs tucked under those stairs, as well as two subs on either side behind the racks of, or behind the line arrays. We can go up and look at that a little closer. Uh, and then you'll see the ginormous, incredible, most expensive thing in the room, which is the LED wall that uh, is on the stage. Uh, we wrestled and wrestled and wrestled with, do we go LED? Do we project? What do we do? We're, we're a liturgical church, so words on screens are, uh, is deeply important to us um, as it is to most churches. But even for us, you know, it's not just the songs, it's also the liturgy. And so what that came down to for us was we stood in this room and we really tried to think about what it would look like to hang trussing across the whole room. And the more we thought about it, we thought, you know, we don't want technology hanging down from the roof and across the room. We want the focus of the entire room to be on that cross and we don't want anything to block it. So what that meant was if we wanted to do it, if we wanted to project, we were going to have to project like 150 feet. We'd have to have a giant white screen up there. Uh, that just was not appealing. And honestly, the cost of projecting well 150 feet away is approaching LED wall cost. So we bit the bullet and uh, we put in a, I believe, 24 feet wide by, I think, 12 or 13 feet tall uh, LED wall. And it's incredible. Our church loves it. I can throw up some lyrics up there so you can see what it looks like. So the lyrics are just crispy. Um, easily readable throughout the entire room. Show some liturgy stuff too, like yeah, the readings. So our liturgy would be like this, like this. Everybody can have their attention just center and focused, you know, looking up at the cross. I love it. Yeah, it's really cool. Not having to turn your head to the side to look at screens beside the stage. So a couple of things that we really like. I mentioned if we were to project, we would have had to have a giant white screen up there. But the fact that this can be black and then the fact that this can be black means really when I black everything out, the LED wall becomes a lot less ominous. It just kind of blends in to the background of the stage, which we really appreciate that. Uh, that this is kind of our sermon look. So when things kind of get smaller for the sermon and you want people kind of focused on one spot as opposed to the bigness of worship and music, we want that LED wall to kind of fade into the background. What's cool about it, though, is even still during the sermon, um, I can, you know, put up, let's see, where's my, put up something like this. Um, so that's our current sermon series. It says liturgy, our response to who God is and what he's done. It's got the name of the sermon and the readings up there, but it's just really subdued. It almost looks like it's painted on the wall as opposed to being something projected. Uh, the antithesis of that would be something like this, which is our current sermon series, which is a beautiful HD image um, that just looks phenomenal. Yep. So. You know, it reminds me, uh, Kaylee and I are working on some interior design stuff and they make those Samsung frame TVs now where it's like, mm -hmm. it's a screen, that you can use as a TV, but the rest of the time, 
it can also just be like an art piece. You know, that's how, that's how I feel about these LED walls, especially because they don't have a nasty, glossy finish to them. Yep. And it just really complements the rest of the room, the rest of the stained glass and the aesthetic in the room. I love that you phrased it like that because that's how we've been talking about it since day one. That's really the vision that I had to cast when it came to even speaking with our board of directors about spending this amount of money on one item, you know, our staff team, is this too gaudy? Is this too big? Is this too whatever? And I had to really remove the thought that like, this is a screen that you're gonna see giant blobs and you know, all sorts of movement on all the time. And I really started to describe it as like a set piece. It gives us the opportunity to totally change the stage for an entire Sunday and drive people towards whatever we're currently doing. So if that's our sermon series, or if that's just a beautiful picture for a whole Sunday that, that the words just kind of fade in up over the top and fade out, it's, it's a set piece. And that is, that's the coolest thing about it. Let's talk about the PA speakers while we're back here and they can see the whole setup. The PA speakers, uh, we, based on the recommendation of Summit, uh, landed on L Acoustics. So these are the L-Acoustics Cara 2 line arrays, um, and they are unreal. I wish I could turn it up and have it translate through the screen that you're currently watching to have you hear what it sounds like in this room. Um, it's, it's one of the best images I've ever heard in my life with sound. It's just incredible. Yeah, no, and like I mentioned earlier, it sounds like you're in a nice treated studio with reference monitors, mm -hmm. and it's just like the clarity, the balance, is incredible that the speakers, of course, combined with the acoustic treatment of the room, right? Because yep. if, if you would have put those in here before the, the acoustic they treatment, it would have sounded like garbage. Yeah, no matter what, it would have sounded like garbage. So don't underestimate, guys, like how much acoustic treatment can help um, fix a lot of the issues that you have and improve your mix quality. Would you say acoustic treatment was what? Was it 25, 30% of this pro project budget? Or my way off you know, there. I don't exactly know the percentages. I would say it'd be very easy to say that acoustic treatment was was very much a six figure item yeah. um, into like hundred, you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars. I mean, it's yeah. just uh, treating this room was the most important thing. And we had our, our integrator with Summit. Um, when he heard it for the first time, he it, it was almost like emotional to hear us turning these speakers on and take the measurements of the room and the, the length of reverberation. And what he, I think the thing that was the most telling was he just came up to me and my senior pastor and we were talking about what we did, what we accomplished. And he thanked us for spending money on the right things. And he said, so oftentimes he ends up in churches where acoustic treatment is like the final part of the discussion. It's the last thing and people don't really understand how important it is. People don't get that like, it does not matter how nice of speakers you put in. Now, we did put in some of the nicest speakers you can buy, but we also did some of the best acoustic treatment you can do. And he thanked us and he said, um, without the commitment that you guys made to acoustic treatment, this would have never been as good as it is today. So let's uh, talk about the last few things in this tech booth. I guess I see a little rack right here and a rack down there. Yeah, so this is our comms system for the booth. So this is like a comms device. We've got comms here for the light rig. Uh, we've got the bat phone, as we affectionately call it, right here for the sound guy. So the nice thing about the bat phone, if you keep the camera right there, when you call, uh, when anybody calls, that lights up. So the sound guy doesn't have to wear a headset. He can just pick this up, have a chat with the control room that's downstairs that we'll show you in a bit. So that's really helpful. Uh, there's also a Mac Mini buried in here. This is called a Sonnet Rack Mac. So you actually buy this 1U rack deal. There's a power button right here. There's some USB. Uh, and that's what the lighting computer is running on. So that's all built into the rack. This is just some interface. Uh, we could plug in to the video rig here. Uh, we could add some more comms in the booth if we wanted to. Down here, uh, this is a patch panel for our network. So certain things that need to be plugged into the church network to be able to get internet like uh, the audio console and that kind of stuff. This is patching things into the Dante network. So audio console, uh, this is the Dante secondary and a battery backup and that's it. Very clean up here. Notice guys, there's just I, not a I'm, whole lot. I'm actually embarrassed by those boxes yeah. under there. What is that doing under there? Cause I'm, I'm kind of a, a nitpicky about this stuff, but. Don't do, well look at that. 
So yeah. again, guys, this is, uh, this is what you get with Summit and their services and being able to really just dial in the setup of, you know, obviously you're getting the hardware there, but how do you do it in a way that's going to be clean and you're not going to have cables like a rat's nest under there? I'm sure, well, that's what our, our tech booth looks like, a rat's nest right now. Um, well, I'll tell you what, I'm committed that if you come back in two years, it's going to look just like that. So I'm... Okay, okay we'll hold you to it. I'm also, uh, I like clean things. I don't, I don't like when people leave coffee in my booth, so yeah. they, they learn about that pretty quick when they do. Um, I just saw you looking up here. Do you want to take a look at this guy? Let's take a look at the camera. So I'll tell you what, you guys. Um, I had coffee with Jake, uh, I don't know, maybe a year ago when I was going through all this. And he got really mad at me when I told him I was going to put PTZ cameras in this whole sanctuary. To the point of like kind of yelling at me. So <laughs> You are my friend, Jake so I care about you. seem like a nice guy. And he is like 90% of the time. But he was very anti me putting in PTZ cameras in this space. Mm -hmm. Uh, these cameras are brand new from Canon. They're 4K, they're full one inch sensors and the image that comes out of them, dare I say, even surprised Jake a little bit in terms yes. of what it looks like. We are not a super uh, production oriented live streamy church, but in the Omicron world that we're living in, we realized it, it, at the beginning of this project that we had to do something pretty robust to be able to broadcast our services and meet people at home. So um, we did not want four people on four cameras in the room. We didn't want big cameras and, you know, having to have everybody yeah, hooked jibs. up on, yeah, comms <laughs> and jibs and all that stuff. We could have pushed for that, but it's just not our DNA. We wanted something that was easy to run by a couple of volunteers uh, that looked great and not flawless. So I think we've hit that pretty well. These cameras are wonderful. We'll show you the control room in a second downstairs where we control them this all. But monstrous tripod. What it is. is. It is. And that's to, as best we can, absorb shock um, for people walking around in the booth. SavvyUS.com. There, that's the one. And it does telescope a, a good bit higher than this. So. Wow. Impressive. Yeah. Okay, I think that covers the tech booth here. Let's go down around the back of your booth. It looks like I saw some tool storage back here. Yeah, we just got this because we don't have a ton of storage. Um, this was the Home Depot special. Yep. Um, but you're gonna love it when you see what's in here because this is fun. So this is where we're storing all of our wireless microphones that are always charging. Um, we've got our assisted listening system, so anybody can come in here, uh, grab one of these, plug in their own headphones, or we have headphones for them, and then they can uh, listen to the service if they're hard of hearing. Another really cool thing about this system, I didn't know about this technology because we had never done this before. So this little lanyard guy plugs into this. Jake, I don't know if this is even gonna surprise you, we'll see. Yeah. You put this around your head like this, and then this, wirelessly beams the audio into your hearing aids. Whoa. So if you are wearing hearing aids and you're hard of hearing, you can control the volume from here and this just beams it directly into the speakers in your hearing aids. So there's like a That's standard it. hearing aid frequency or it's something? It's called T-Coil. Okay. Uh, so you can Google that. It's a whole system that I think most hearing aid manufacturers now use. So you put your hearing aids in T-Coil mode and then it just grabs the audio from right there. And a lot of churches do it where they actually run um, cable through the floor, T-coil cable. And so people in any seat in the room can hit this button on their hearing aids and be like beamed into the system or they'll like run it through the like pews or the chairs or something. So oh, wow. there's some great technology out there with that stuff that I just learned about through this project. So yeah, this is just great storage for us. I love how um, that's perfectly tall enough for those mics. I know, isn't it great? We took the, uh, we, we took the mics and the holders to Home Depot with us oh, to okay. make sure that it was tall enough. And uh, yeah, this just gives us great storage for all little stupid little things that you have in your sound booth that you don't know where to put, like, you know, Y adapters and microphones and things that end up on the floor, like in milk crates under your sound booth. They now end up in here all nice and locked away. And it's great because it's nice and yeah. secure. We can lock up the mics at night and... Yeah, just leave the keys there. Yeah, well, it's actually brand new. We got it last week, so we haven't uh, made key copies yet, but okay. we'll get there. Uh Guys, let us know how you like this new format of Worship Tech Tour. We're just going to follow people around with cameras and put a lav mic on them and let them talk. Jake's trying to put in the least amount of work possible, so that's really what this comes down to. He's probably going to edit that out, too. 
too much work to edit it out. That's right. <laughs> All right, here we are, the stage. The stage, one of the things that's brand new that you'll notice is our super cool curvy glass drum shield. Um, it's not a drum enclosure, there's no top to it. We didn't feel like we needed a top, um, but it just looks beautiful and allows the drummer to still continue to participate in worship while feeling like he's not completely cut off from, he or she is not completely cut off from the congregation. So that just showed up a couple weeks ago. We're real pleased with that. What else do you wanna know? Um, just kind of walk us through, okay, so the stage, you got these nice wooden steps going up there. You said the subwoofers are underneath. So yeah, I think I can actually see. Mm -hmm. Subwoofers and front fill speakers. Are underneath. Oh, little front fills right there. Yep, and then these, uh, this middle section of stairs is all on rollers. So if we do have a tech problem, we can just roll the stairs right out of the way, yeah. get back into the subs, figure out what's going on. Yep. So that's great. Um, you can see the line array is up a little closer. So um, three subwoofers under the stage and then two subwoofers behind each set of line arrays. I was not familiar with the whole put your subs behind your line arrays concept, but apparently that's a thing that a lot of people Why? do. I don't know. It's just, like it, it's convenient because you don't have to take up more space. Um, oh, yeah. But I just because they're not like under them. They're not under. They're not to the side. They're like hidden behind them. And apparently that's very intentional design from L Acoustics that you can use them like. It's that. So clean. Yeah, super clean. Really nice. Um, you like I said keeps things. We we wanted the tech to really hide in this room, and so it really keeps it tucked up and close to the wall. Yeah, here's a closer look, guys, of just all the lighting trusses they got up there. And do you know if those are Chauvet or Martin lights? I think they're all Chauvet. Okay. Pretty sure. Nice. Um, let's, let's take a look at... Um, <clears throat> you want to look at like floor boxes? You've got the hot tub over here. We do have the hot tub. So this is where we uh, have beers at the end of the workday. Um, <laughs> Does it have LED lights and a sound <clears throat> system built in? Matrix 4 up on the screen right here and, oh, perfect. you know, live the dream. There we go. Here's your view. The view of the, mo the, uh, the, the theater right that's here right. from the hot tub. That's right. That's pretty, that's pretty sweet. <clears throat> no, this is actually a very serious, wonderful um, piece of equipment that we have yep. that uh, is our baptismal. So like I said before, it kind of juts out into the people. There's actually even some cool tech in here. It's a one button fill, one button drain. Nice. Um, so it's really easy to, we, to use it often as we hope we're baptizing people as much. Wait, you guys baptize people? We do every once in a while. Um, so you can see kind of the stage set up here. There's floor boxes built all through the concrete all around this place. Every floor box is just full of I.O., which is wonderful. Um, so in here we've got uh, Ethernet jacks, we've got SDI jacks, and we've got XLR ins and outs. Uh, the cool thing about this, we'll show you downstairs, every single uh, port that you see in these floor boxes are completely patchable. So what that means is, you know, this Enet-10 port can do many, many things uh, with just a patch downstairs. It can be our, it can be a um, input for our AVM 360 system. So our in-ear monitors can run off one of these. It can be just a regular standard network jack uh, that gets you internet. So you're just plugged into the network. Um, or it can be a Dante enabled port so you can run Dante in or out from one of those ethernet jacks. Same with video. Uh, you can run video in and out uh, of every jack. And so if I wanted to put a big giant TV here and put whatever feed I wanted, I could put it here. Or I can plug it into that box or that box. If I wanted to set up a laptop for a presenter to use and they wanted to present from right here, I could plug them into SDI right here or in any box and patch it downstairs and everything works. All right, we've got more of those PTZ cameras, one on stage here. Yep, this is just our mover. So um, based on what's going on for the week or if we just want a different angle on the stream, we can pop this guy wherever we want it. And there's also, there's one you guys can see on the wall right there. And then the same mirrored on the other side. Yep, oh yeah, the same, same on the other wall right there. Thank you, Chipper. It's sure. okay, right there. <laughs> it's four camera setup. Yep. All right. Okay. So we'll yep. go back to cameras again. I just want you, as we walk through the space, I want you guys to just notice these things. And then uh, keyboard, we got the Nord. Um, what's that saying? You got to, you can only praise the Lord with the Nord or something <laughs> like, like that. that. I like that a lot. Okay. We, we buy that. What is that? The stage? I think it's stage two. Yeah. You've had that one for a while, right? We've had this for, gosh, eight years, seven years. Never look back. Yep. There's nothing like a Nord piano patch. 
Um, and then <clears throat> let's look at the drum set. You are the drummer. I am one of the drummers. Uh, there's three of us. <clears throat> so a couple of things. Um, our laptop right here, I mentioned you can plug Dante directly in uh, to the floor box. So this runs to the audio console via Dante, and we use it for clicks and tracks. Um, what's great about getting onto a Dante-based system is I can tell this laptop, hey, I want you to send out uh, three channels of audio, left, right, and click. And at my audio console, I patch in left, right, and click. Or I can get real fancy, and I can say, I want you to send out 12 channels of audio. And through all of those channels, I want all the different track options that they give you in like multi-tracks or whatever you've purchased. So if I want to send the sound guy individual tracks, I can do that as well. <clears throat> so you'll see on the drum kit, everything is uh, mic'd up. We also have a drum trigger system. So the kick, snare, and both toms are triggered. We don't use that for audio purposes at all. We use that for gating. Um, so what that does is this brain sends a triggered sound to the audio console. Uh, when the audio console receives that sound, like the snare drum sound, it uses that sound as a reference to open up the snare mic with the gate and then close the snare mic. So you're not hearing fake drums in the room, but you are uh, using the fake drums to trigger the gates that keep the, all the mics open and closed when you need them open and closed. Um, we also have some separate I.O. for the drums down here. You can see we've got a little Allen and Heath digital snake. This is a 16 input, 8 output digital snake that's buried down here. So just kept our drum cabling clean. We could run them all to, these, to that floor box and this floor box, but it's just a lot of cables, especially when you're talking about you know, kick, snare, tom, tom, Overhead, overhead, hi-hat, trigger, trigger, <laughs> trigger, trigger, and I'm probably missing a couple. So we're, we're at like easily 12 to 14 channels of drums. Uh, and so we run that right into this I.O. and it makes a lot of sense. Nice. Yeah, so for mics, you've got the, I see you got the AKGs, right? Those yep. big, nice, fancy. We got the really nice, fancy AKGs. Mm -hmm. uh, a good buddy of mine, the guy who did our integration with Summit, told me, it's the most important part of the drum kit is the overheads. And if I was going to invest in any microphones for a drum kit, I should invest in those and do things like put a 57 on the snare drum, which works flawlessly. Um, so that's the, that was our theory in purchasing really nice microphones for overheads. Yeah, it looks like you get the K custom cymbals. Yep. A little bit. And we swap out cymbals. We swap out stuff pretty often based on what we're doing and kind of how we're feeling. And we've got a good set of, Symbols downstairs, and so. Yeah. What's the company who makes the drum shield? Uh, it's Whiteley Solutions. Um, they're one of the only people out there that make these curved plexi drum shields. So this was not a cheap drum shield solution by any stretch, but boy, is it beautiful! And we was just it really. 3000 5000 It was about dead center of that. Four thousand um, dollars. It's actually two thousand dollars if you're willing to drive to Indianapolis and pick it up yourself. But to ship something like this, to create it and ship it is actually an extra 2,000 bucks. Wowzers. Okay. Yeah. Um, take a look behind the LED wall I just because it's yeah. cool. So I mean, got... check out this infrastructure back here. What's this brand called? Uh, so the brand is called Vanguard. Um, and so they're so, pretty standard LED wall manufacturer. Okay. Um, so you could see we've got tons of bracing uh, if you look down here to the floor, these each leg is like screwed into the floor. Mm -hmm. So we really had to figure out how to make this thing not fall forward because it's so big. Yep. You've also got some aircraft cable up there attaching it to the wall. Yep. Um, so that's that. And then we mounted light bars in it. And that's how you get, I showed you earlier, the lights up on the cross. Yep. So that's how you get the light is the lights that are mounted in the LED wall. Oh, yeah, because there's a light bar there. There's a light bar right here as well mm -hmm. that's off that right shoots yeah. up that wall. Yep. Okay. And you guys, did you have, uh, you had like a real mason do this, the wood, the stone, or was oh, that? Yeah. yeah, that's yeah. all real stone work. Yeah. It was pretty fun to watch. It was before, obviously, all the tech was here. And they would have a dude up there on a scaffolding, and they had this huge pile of rocks in the middle of the stage. And the guy would just call for the size that he wanted. Oh, and, the, wow. and the guy would just go, <sighs> and he'd throw the rock up, and then the guy up there would catch it. And Seriously? they did it like a thousand times, and that's how they got all the rock up there. <laughs> it was wild. <laughs> so look at, yeah, look at the pixels, how... Fine. I don't even. 
Uh, what's the measurement they use for pixel count? Is it a pixel count or is it a density or? I have no idea. I, what I know about this wall is that there's a lot of I pixels. Think at seven feet out, you can no longer see pixels. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I think at like nine feet out, it's fully HD. Yeah. So I think, I don't exactly know what the math on all that is, but that's what I was told. You guys get the cute little bass rig right there? Yeah, it's, it's actually just for the kids' ministry. They come in and play the bass. Oh, yeah, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, uh, we really use that amp purely for bass processing. We really like the Ampeg yeah. head and the sound. Uh, we couldn't care less Does about Does it even have the cab on at all? I think so, but I never hear it. I mean, we're fully isolated in our in ear so it doesn't matter. You really, need, you really need that cab to make up for the deficiencies in these that's subs right. that are hanging that's up here? That's exactly what it does. It's like when we don't have quite enough bass, we turn this guy up and it works. Uh, we went with Aviom 360s. So it, yeah, you didn't go with the Allen and Heath. We did not go with the Allen and Heath. So this is- I thought Aviom was like still a 90s thing you or did. 2000s. Most people did until you learned that this is like the coolest thing that I've ever used in my entire career wow. as a musician. Um, we went to a, uh, our band was actually flown out to uh, North Carolina to do a conference yeah. at this huge like mountain resort in North Carolina. And we show up and the people that were there the week before us were uh, need to breathe. So like big conference center. I mean, tons of, tons of bands. And this is what they had sitting up on the stage. And I had no concept other than Aviom would be like what my grandma used at the organ, you know, like 30 years ago. And I used this at that conference and it just blew my mind. Um, the quality coming through it, the kind of experience you have. So you get, six, you get 16 channels, but what's really nice about that is you get 16 stereo channels. So huge, huge difference. Um, so I can, and, and you route, you pick which ones you want to be mono and which ones you want to be stereo in the configuration. Um, but then beyond 16, you also have this dual profile channel over here, which give you, gives you a 17th. And then your 18th channel is this ambience button. So each one of these has a built-in microphone. And so you can turn up the ambience if you want to hear what's going on on stage around you. If you're like a violin player and you want a little bit more of just your violin and kind of the presence of the room, you can crank this little microphone up. We didn't like that, so we don't use it that way. You can actually route whatever you want via Dante to this ambience button. And so we routed our shotgun microphones that are up here towards the crowd. So ambience for us is our crowd mics. So really we have 18 channels. Um, every channel has independent reverb and uh, EQ that you can set yourself. You could save as many presets as you want. A couple of things that are really nice, like this instant mix recall. Um, we do a lot of shared worship leading. So we'll have this person lead a song, this person lead a song, this person lead a song. And that becomes really hard as a musician. Like, you know, you might have had somebody tuck back in your mix and now they're leading the song and you actually need to hear them. So you can set up these instant mix and I can say like, well, A is my first vocal, B is my second vocal and C is my third vocal. So I can reach over between songs and go, oh, B is leading this song and it pops that person up in the mix and it drops the other two down in the mix, but it keeps everything else the same. So I can set all that during practice and then, you know, it just becomes easy to make like really quick changes on your mix and it's a wonderful wonderful system. The other thing it does, you've, everybody kind of knows, well, not everybody, all the people that are watching Churchfront tech things probably know about spatial audio that Apple is doing with AirPods and all that stuff where it, like they can take a stereo signal and now they can use like time delays and place it in different places. This does that for your in-ear monitors. So you have your basic pan. So Jake, if you come in here, you have your basic pan where I can say, I want to pan this way or this way. But then I also have stereo spread and I can spread the signal, whether the stereo, whether the stereo things are further away from me or closer to me. So if I combine spread and pan, it allows me to actually almost build out a stage of instruments around me as they are in real life. So that's a cool feature that I think is unique to uh, Aviom and to this specific 360 system. All right, and then tell us what you guys got for your electric guitar rig. So we've been in every single electric guitar direction that you can imagine. Uh, we really used to love the Fender Blues Junior 
amp. We use that as kind of our house amp. It's a smaller amp, but it does the job of what many bigger amps do. Um, but recently when we moved in here, we bit the bullet and we got the Kemper. Uh, and so what we've learned with the Kemper is most guitar players are okay with it. Whereas any amp you're gonna set out on the stage, you're gonna have a guitar player that loves it and a guitar player that hates it. And with the Kemper, you can really custom tailor it for each player. So um, we're pretty anti-stage volume. We're all on in-ears. We don't do a lot of you know amps and stuff on the stage. So the Kemper for that, for electric guitar players, from what I understand not being an electric guitar player, kind of is the industry standard for amp simulation, so. Yeah, so they've got their own pedal boards that just plug into that mm -hmm. as the amp simulator. Okay, yep. cool. Impressive. Do you guys run a stereo out? We do, um, but there's some, there's some weirdness with Kemper and stereo based on the way that guitar players have to hook up their rig. Oh, yeah. So like we've got a certain guitar player that like does it the right way and a certain guitar player that doesn't. And all that really means is sometimes the guitar is mono, sometimes it's stereo. Um, and it's fine really either way. It works, works fine either way. All right, so we've got an acoustic rig set up. What are these little, well. Ooh, I, I didn't PI. tell you about this right here. What is that? This is a fancy, fancy little guy. So all that does is take one microphone and turn it in to two outputs, which means our worship leader. Ooh, talk back. Is talking like this to the church, and then the worship leader is talking like this to the band. That so that is super helpful on Sundays, especially when we're doing extended worship or any kind of a you know, game-changing situation. Our worship leader just kind of stomps here and he just kind of talks at a low level. Have they ever messed up before? Uh, I'll tell you one thing that's funny. Our worship pastor is going to kill me, but I don't care. Uh, he has gotten in the habit of holding his foot on this. Uh -huh. And so like on Christmas Eve, just recently, our, our wonderful, incredibly talented female vocalist was singing, uh, I believe, A Holy Night. And he was not supposed to be singing that song but he left his foot here and sang the whole thing in worship. And it meant that he serenaded the entire band, Oh Holy Night, like front to back, full bore. While she was leading it, we were uh, listening to him. Nice, because at least your front of house guy could pull him down. Well, he's on this, so the front of house guy doesn't have to, because this takes him out of the house. Oh, he, okay, okay, I thought, yeah, 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 that makes sense. So he was singing it to the band because he kept, he, he kept his foot on it and he had it like, oh. you know, just, piping in our ears so I that is a great idea though I want to implement one of these Every single guys church. if you watch this whole tech tour this is probably one of the coolest things that you can take away and get so the throne room pedals push to talk you just need another input for your stage box and just yep. call it you know on your mixer have another channel labeled talk back worship yep. leader talk back oh man I would love so, that the great thing is then in our program mix here that's where the worship leader talk back comes through so we have all microphones that are like our speaking microphones, the lectern, the sermon, like anybody that's on a handheld comes through the program mix. The pre-post music comes through the program mix. So that's just kind of our catch-all channel in the AVMs that gives us everything we would need for production. And so during church, what that amounts to is this becomes incredibly important for the band to have up in their ears. And we can turn on a dime, even from the standpoint of like, it's a quiet moment and you don't want to go, one, two, Three, you just go one, two, three, and you start the song and the band comes in perfectly together. Everything's glorious and nobody out there knew the difference. Wow, that's awesome. All right, let's get out of here before we get any more ideas. I'm glad, I, uh, I'm glad we remembered that. That's, a, that's just a stupid $80 box or something yeah. that like changes the whole game for us. I, uh, Dude, have you, ever seen, have you seen those Optigates? No. It's um, it's a infrared noise gate that you could put on talkback mics. So let's say you had your pianist oh, wanted cool. to talk back. So it only activates when they put their face in front of it. <laughs> oh, that's super cool. Yeah. I actually, uh, at one point, at one point recently, Kerry Job was playing a show somewhat close to here and I went and I knew a person that was helping with production. She has a custom Shure microphone that they make for her that has two outputs of the same microphone with a button on it. So Carrie Job can like oh. swing around, push the button, talk to the band wirelessly, oh. and then let go of the button and she's back in the house. Yeah. So that's, that's the like super cool implementation of our little like cheap little box that does the same thing. Yeah. 
All right, we're going into the broadcast room. Broadcast room. So welcome to the kind of messy control room in the moment. The reason why it's messy is you can see here, uh, this room is becoming our new green room. So they're laying carpet in here, uh, I think, tomorrow. And uh, then we'll take a bunch of the stuff that's in there back in here. So a couple of electric pieces of furniture in here. But this is what you're all here for, the tech tour. Uh, where do we start? Let's start with ProPresenter. Start with ProPresenter. This is the ProPresenter machine. It is mounted in this little XMAC mini server 1U rack mount deal. We have a love-hate relationship with ProPresenter, just like everybody else on planet Earth. So we are pretty stingy about anything happening on the ProPresenter computer, which is nothing. So it does not double as live stream. It does not double as file storage. You don't get to check your email and log into your Google account. This thing purely exists to run ProPresenter. And on that giant LED wall, we need it to be pretty solid. So um, that's the ProPresenter machine. Because we only use it for that, we got a secondary machine right here. And this is kind of our catch-all machine down here. So this helps us monitor the live stream, file management, remote into other systems. So we kind of use both of these computers simultaneously. Um, so this is just kind of everything else. This other computer down here is a little Windows NOC computer, and it exists for our camera system. It's uh, the only Windows machine I think we have in the whole building, uh, but you need it to run this software that is specific to Canon, um, their remote camera control application. So uh, cameras are controlled specifically through this computer and then this fancy PTZ camera controller down here, which um, we are just exploring all the features of what this thing can do for us in terms of camera usage and speed and functionality and all the different things you can do with PTZ and presets and all that stuff. Okay, cool. So if I'm the ProPresenter operator, this is my workstation, of course, I can see what's going on in the room because we've got the multi-views up here of all the cameras, as well as the, you'll talk about the video switching setup here in a moment, what that's all doing. Um, nice setup, and then audio-wise, we've got a RedNet for what, for headphones or controlling the monitors right here? The RedNet controls these two monitors, yep. yep. But they do, it does have a headphone output too if you needed mm -hmm. headphones. But then we've got the nice, what are those, HS5s, HS something? Uh, yeah, um, what are they? They look like they're the, the H HS5. Yeah, and then you've got the A10 video switcher uh, in the middle, and then here's what the control for the cameras look like. So, video switching camera control with the pretty crazy Canon remote controller here, the RC IP100. And this guy controlling the four different camera angles that we saw upstairs uh, right there. And then you got, what's, what's this viewer? Is this program or something or what's the? Uh, I believe uh, that is just a, it, that's just camera four, but we can change that with these buttons over here to be whichever camera we want oh, okay. with the scope. Nice. All right, and that's, this is the computer he was talking about that runs the software for the control. So, all right, just to give people the lay of the land there. So now walk us through, yeah, just your whole video switching strategy, how you add graphics to everything, and yeah, then so, how you encode and record and all of it. So all three of these TVs here are controlled by our video router in the closet here, which we'll show you in a second. So we can change the purpose of these TVs via software. We can even set up like a hotkey here to say we're doing something different down here. Maybe it's a wedding or you know something where you would want this layout different and one button and everything changes with what you see. This setup is our Sunday morning setup. So the person that's sitting here is running cameras. And so they don't need to know about switching. They don't need to know about program or whatever. They just need to know what camera is pointing where. So they've got all four cameras in the grid right there on that screen. The person that's sitting here is doing our video switching and they're using actually both of these monitors. Um, this monitor is the ME1 program output and selections and this monitor is the ME2 program output and selections. So the way you think about that is this is our broadcast feed. This is every single thing that's going um, out on the live stream. This is our LED wall feed. So everything that's going up on the LED wall and we can using the switcher independently switch for both outputs. So if we want to have live video going out on the you know, program feed, but obviously we don't want live video all the time on that LED wall, then we can control what's up there. But we can then do any combination of 
both. We can take, uh, you know, we can put live video up on the LED wall the second we want to put it up there, or we can put different kinds of video. Uh, we can take the, you know, the pro presenter feed and put it out on the live stream or, or whatever we want. And that's what you get with a two output switcher. Yeah, so out of ProPresenter, going into your ATEM, if we look at the multi-views here, you've got, your, you've got your LED wall output. That's the, the top left here, right? So that's, so like that's the LED wall in, uh, input. Input, sorry, okay. Yeah. Or this is, this, I don't know why this is actually labeled LED. This is the ProPresenter input. Okay. Stage display, alpha key and overlay, okay. and then our four cameras. But the power. idea is that that left one with the, that says LED is like your full screen content. That no, that's this one. Okay, ME2. Oh, okay. That's the program feed. Oh, okay, I see. So this is, this is what ProPresenter is sending in as an input. Yep. This is what we're sending out to the LED wall. Okay, but in, okay, in ProPresenter, though, about to send so out if to I were to go here in ProPresenter and click on, like, lyrics, but, yes, but the idea is, like, this is, like, your usual congregation, what they're seeing in the room, right? This is. Yes. This is what they're seeing in the room. Okay. So this is the program feed of the LED wall. Yes. And so this is what they're about to see in the room if I run my switch. Okay. This is all the inputs to that system. Okay. And all the inputs are the same because it's the same video switcher. So one through eight and one through eight are the same on both outputs. Okay. But I can take these, I can take all these one through eight and, put, and use them in any way that I want for the LED wall. And okay. then I can take all those one through eight over there and use them in any way I want for the live stream. Oh, okay, okay. Finally wrapping my mind around it. That makes sense. So one thing that's cool, I'll show you an example of something different. Um, if I go to here and I pull up our baptism liturgy, one of the times that we actually do put live video up on the uh, pro presenter wall would be during a baptism. So we've created this specific liturgy, and you can see the words are all the way over there on the right-hand side, and there's yep. nothing on the left. Okay. So then what I can do is I can take camera three, let's see. And I'm gonna move camera, I'm sorry, camera two. I'm gonna move camera two, as you can see, over to the baptismal. So pretend somebody's in there getting a baptism. Mm -hmm. And then I can make this go live. And so now what's up on the LED wall yeah. is the live video of the baptismal yeah. with the ProPresenter liturgy feed. And I can change that with the live video behind it. So yeah. that's what you get for a separate output yeah. for your LED walls. You can do all that video mixing yeah. for the LED wall. So you can actually, if I back off, if you just come look over here at camera one, you can see it up there. Um, yep. So that's what that looks like on the actual wall. That is so cool. Man, it's just, it's just such a perfect blend of maintaining, like, this is look like, it's like you have the Book of Common Prayer in, 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 superimposed on an iMac. Mm -hmm. You know, that's, yep. that's, a, that's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay. So a couple other things you'll see down here. These are our streaming and recording devices. We use the, does anybody know how to say it? The company's called AJA. Do you say Aja? Do you say uh, I, I think I've heard Aja. Aja. This is the Aja Hilo. There's two of them. So we use one of them to stream and one of them to record. So when yep. we start the stream and start recording every Sunday, you just hit stream and record. SD card goes there. That's yep. what gets us live. Yep. Um, comms right here. So you can plug into comms. What's nice about having comms in the control room is that this is a dedicated speaker built into this box. So if the sound guy's talking in the phone upstairs, they don't actually have to have headsets on down here to hear them. They can just hear them coming straight through. Nice. nice. So let's now go look at the real glory. This is the control room. Wow. I mean, it's actually, it's, they really compact them down into two, two racks there. I yep. mean, it's not like, you got a lot going on here, but it's not taking up that much space for, for what you're getting. A couple of things you'll notice if you walk in here that you can't see or feel over video. Uh, number one, it's nice and cool in here, and that's because we have dedicated air conditioning for this room. So. Uh, you know, there's a mini split system back there that runs 24 hours a day and keeps this place nice and cool. Um, so that's really helpful. Uh, I'll just walk you through the rack. So yeah, let's go ahead. I'm going to use my camera and just, uh, let's yeah. start up here. Yeah. So this is our wireless gear. Yep. Um, 
This is the D800 units for the Aviom. So this is what controls those 360s. So each one of the Aviom 360s on the stage is patched into a port on this guy. Okay. <clears throat> this receives audio from the backside over the Dante network. Perfect. Okay. This is a video router. Which, which, by the way, is nice. So you're not like having to patch, you know, five different units, Dante devices, like Correct. separately. It's really just one device, and then this goes to all of them, sends them the same channels of audio. Yep. Okay. Now, and you can do it different. We could we could send different Dante to different 360s and all sorts of craziness, but okay. we don't need that. All of ours work just the same. Okay. <clears throat> More comms for in this room, which actually has been super convenient as we're troubleshooting. Or if I'm down here patching and I've got somebody in the booth, I can talk to them. So that's great. Uh, this is our QSYS controller. So this is what fires up the room and turns it all off with one okay. button. <clears throat> this is that S-Link, Alan and Heath, that I was talking about. So this is all of our audio, I.O., ins and outs. So each stage box feeds into one of these cables. All these cables get patched in as we need them. So many of the XLR jacks on the stage right now are dead because they're not patched in anything because we're not using them. So we keep a big Excel spreadsheet that shows us what is patched to what at all times. And then when we need to like plug an instrument on the other side of the stage, we put a note in that spreadsheet, we come down here, we patch it, and it's done. You should put like a cheap tablet right here or something like that. Yeah, we could. That'd be kind of cool. Yeah. All right. We all have our own tablets, so I think we just typically carry them around with us. And these are your... Uh... So these are all the acoustic amps. Okay. All the way down, yeah. and a battery backup. Oh, nice. So in case the power goes out, it's not going to shut everything up. <clears throat> yeah, and it's really a, a fail-safe solution that just means things don't get hard shut down. It can't, you can't run the room with no power for very long. Yep. Yeah. So this is just a fiber patch bay for our network. We run a fiber trunk into this room. This is the actual church network, so um, internet and all of that. This is Dante, primary and secondary. This is the whole light rig patched in. This is a physical video patch panel, and this is then all the digital video patching that happens here. This is the actual video switcher. So the desk, the Blackmagic deal that you see out there is just a remote controller yep. for this. So this is doing all the switching. This is a video processing bay with lots of different cards that are processing video. This is the patch panel for the LED wall. So all the LED uh, inputs and outputs. And then we've got a separate power supply. This is the LED wall brain. So this is what receives the signal for the LED wall and then translates it to however many, you know, hundreds of panels are up there. Tells each panel what to put up on the screen and then another battery backup. That, the, so the Vertiv, because I've seen them used for controlling things. Is that, that's a battery backup or is that a, um, for Summit to remote in? No, this is just a battery backup. Okay. So they do. They but do I'll show you the Summit remote in box. Yes. Well, oh, and the back of the, the, uh, yeah, this is impressive back here anyway, so you're going to want to come over here. It's going to make many of you happy. Yeah. I always like looking at the back side of these things. It's very pretty, as you can wow. see. Uh, they do an incredible job of cable management. They even leave me with a little SDI tool in here so I can reach in, unscrew SDI without, you know, breaking my fingers. Did you know that in one Summit rack, there's enough cable to go from to the moon and back? I, there, and yeah, probably around the oh. world 30 times. <laughs> um, I, I made them label this the Summit Magic Box because that's what it is and yep. they didn't do that. So that's, that's this, is where, this is where Summit remotes into your system and they can really help you out with tech support. All yeah, those fans, fast. man. So all those fans, and you know what? They're not even running because it's so cool in here. Wow. So they're all temperature triggered and if, they were, if it were to get hot, they would kick on. Wow. So amps. This is like uh, line array patching. So each speaker right here, this is like a patch panel. So oh, yeah. helpful for testing your line arrays if you have something going on. Yep. Um, yeah, That's Avions, so Dante inputs from the Dante network. This is how you control which Dante channel is getting stereo and mono. So you flip these dip switches here. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. One last look at that for you guys. Yep. All right, so well, tell me about, this was actually, I was kind of curious about the video patching. So it, was it a ton of like SDI runs coming to the back of this? Mm -hmm. And then these front cables just allow you to easily, wow. Yeah, so okay, so oh, that's, that is like, I think I that's I forget the, the exact one. name of You might want to double check. Yeah, yeah, what did you just do? I think I put it Roll back. back the tape, goodness. Oh, Don't touch my stuff. I think I put it in the right Church one. is not gonna happen on Sunday now, your fault. Yeah. Um, so. 
I don't remember the name for what they told me that this was, but essentially it's a patch panel where... Bitry patch panel. Well, yeah, but it's there's a specific name where this right here, which is Video 103 Platform Video, uh -huh. is already patched to this. So like this patching from here to here mm -hmm. is unnecessary because the patch is already happening. Yep. What you do is you use this to change a patch that's mm. in existence. And so that's why like this guy is plugging a camera in from here to here. You would never put two cables into the same one because it's just a straight patch yeah, already. But you can also then do all the same similar things with this patch panel down here. So yeah, yeah. when I when I move that camera around up there on stage, I come down to this hub and I say, hey, my destination is this and my source is this and it routes it into the video switcher the right way. And this gives us a ton of room for expansion. I mean, yeah. if I want a fifth camera, a seventh camera, a whatever, it just becomes very easy to have more inputs, more outputs, more everything, because everything is hardwired and done. It's just a matter of setting the patch in the right way. Thanks for taking the time to walk us through pretty much the entire system. I'm sure there's probably things we forgot. I'm sorry for those of you guys in the comments if we forgot something in this setup, but maybe we'll just come back, make more videos in the future. Um, go to Wellspring's YouTube channel. Just search Wellspring Anglican Church based in Englewood, Colorado. You can at least see the live stream, but like to really get the full effect, you just have to come here. Come see us. Come see them on a Sunday. They're open for business every Sunday morning. Um, and also, here's one of the things I, this, I wanted to kind of end this video on this note. Wellspring Church, personally, this church means a lot to me just because I was a part of this church back um, basically 10, almost 10 years ago now when I first moved to Colorado, I was going to seminary. But the thing that's nice about this church, what I really appreciated when I was here, Kaylee and I actually got married in this church in the old building, is they're just like the, one of the most missional churches I know in all of Denver. Um, every week you guys, you have dinner or lunch for the homeless, right? Mm -hmm. How many people usually come by for that? Anywhere between like 70 and 100. 70 to 100 people in this area of, or in this uh, city in Englewood and like, and this is not the, Englewood, Colorado, if you drive through here, this is not fancy, polished suburbs We're of Denver. Kind of suburbs. You have to drive 15 minutes south to like Littleton Highlands Ranch to, to get that vibe. This is like one of the, you know, rougher parts of, of the Denver metro area, but it's so cool to see, uh, you know, them investing into the city, you know, through what they're doing in this building. So obviously they have amazing you know, worship that's happening here for, for this congregation. But then there's so many mission oriented things that they're doing to serve the homeless that's in this area um, and just helping this city, you know, um, just thrive. So I'm grateful for this church being close by to us and kind of the role it's played in my life. And, and I wasn't joking at the top of the video, this is kind of my personal favorite blend of technology and liturgy and all the things I love about worship. So Jeff, props to you, man, for getting this done. Um, I can't wait to see you guys use this for like many decades to come. Um, it's such an awesome space. So thank you guys for watching this video. I know it's kind of long, but hopefully if you made it to the end, you, you took away a lot of uh, value and ideas about what's important when you build worship tech infrastructure at your church. Go ahead, leave a like, um, subscribe to the channel, check out all the links to resources down below the video. So what we're gonna do, because this was such a huge project, we'll link some of the vendors so you can check out Summit uh, Integrated. Let us know we sent you um, when if you reach out to them for a design project, uh, as well as some of the architects you guys work with and the acoustician, because it's one thing, Jeff, we didn't really talk about this, but like you didn't have a, a, a manual to like, okay, we have this huge building, who the heck do I even talk to to like approach these problems, right? Yep. So we'll try to re put all those links below. So if your church is doing something similar, we can hopefully save you some time and headache and connect you with the, the contractors who helped out well. Toss my uh, contact in there too. Always happy to shoot an email, yep. give people any guidance I can give. Yeah, awesome. Well, thanks so much for watching guys. We'll see you next time.